in the last session we had learned about general linear model as a natural extension of the ordinary linear model because longitudinal data is correlated ordinary linear model cannot be used and hence we need the general linear model although in the previous session we had introduced general linear model we had applied the ordinary least square estimates in context to a longitudinal data and have seen that it results in unbiased parameter estimates but the parameter estimates are not efficient in this session we shall be learning about the natural extension of the ordinary least squares which is the weighted least squares so we shall learn about what is a weighted least squares and what are the properties that are associated with weighted least squares naturally a special case of weighted least squares is the ordinary least squares and we would see when a weighted least squares becomes a ordinary least squares finally we would have ideas about what is called robust estimation we would learn more about robust estimation in much later stage where we deal with what is called the marginal models but here we would have an idea about what is a robust estimation and how do we do the robust estimation briefly in context to longitudinal data also note that in this session we won't be using any likelihood based approach so the approach here for finding the parameters would be in terms of minimizing the residual sum of squares or the or the residuals now remember that in ordinary least squares we find the estimates by minimizing the sum of squares of errors so we have a mean model which is y equal to x beta so the estimate of the residuals is y minus x beta and we find the minimizing function which is y minus x beta transpose y minus x beta in w ls the minimizing function is very similar to the minimizing function of ols but it has something extra and that extra is a symmetric weight matrix w so in wls the estimate of the parameter beta is obtained by minimizing the objective function s beta with a suffix w indicating the weight matrix y minus x beta transpose w y minus x beta and note that the moment we replace this w by an identity matrix i this becomes y minus x beta transpose y minus x beta and the wls becomes the ols now the minimization of sw beta is done by solving the equation del sw beta by del beta equal to 0 and on this we get the estimate which is beta hat and that's a function of w which is the weight matrix which is x transpose w x inverse x transpose w y again if w is replaced by i this becomes x transpose x inverse x transpose y the standard ols estimate now a fair assumption is that w is block diagonal matrix with non zero blocks because each uh, block diagonal so each matrix corresponds to each individual's weights and these are not related so i can assume w to be w1 and then w2 and then w3 like this in the blocks but wi is a ni cross ni matrix in the most generic sense where ni is the number of observations for the ith individual now 
then we can write beta hat w as summation i runs from their m individual so 1 to m xi transpose wi xi so nothing we, if we apply capital w equal to di diagonal or block diagonal wi's and then do a little bit of linear algebra this comes out to be summation i runs from 1 to m xi transpose wi xi inverse then xi transpose wi yi and further if we assume that the data or the design is balanced that means equal number of observations per person and complete that is no observations are missing that means capital xi equal to x and wi equal to w for all i and if we just plug in x and w in place of xi and wi we get beta hat w is x transpose w x inverse x transpose w 1 by m i runs from 1 to m y note that 1 by m i runs from 1 to m y is y bar which is the mean so this means that for a balanced and complete design beta hat w or the weighted least squares corresponds to the regression of averages once again replace w by i and we get what is called the ordinary least square estimate now what are the properties of weighted least squares the first property is if we take an expectation of it it leads to beta that is the weighted least squares is unbiased so expectation of beta w beta hat w sorry is if we do it it comes out to be x transpose w x inverse x transpose w expectation of y and if we put expectation of y equal to x beta it cancels out and we are left with beta so expectation of beta hat w is beta meaning that weighted least squares yields an unbiased estimate. Now if we do the variance of beta hat what happens? Now the moment we do variance of beta hat w this comes out to be a, a bit of a complicated form but let us see how we can do it. We can assume x transpose w x to be capital A for the time being and x transpose w y to be say y star. So variance of beta hat w would be variance of a y star which is a variance of y star a prime and then y star is x transpose w y variance of it means x transpose w variance of y x transpose w prime and if we do that plug in the values we get the form of variance of beta hat w. The moment we put w equal to i again OLS we have variance of beta hat is x transpose x inverse x transpose sigma x x transpose x inverse where capital sigma is variance of y. And if we use the weight to be sigma inverse that is in general weighted least squares terms the inverse sigma inverse then variance of beta hat sigma inverse comes out to be x transpose sigma inverse x inverse and variance of beta hat sigma inverse is less than variance of beta hat w. So sigma inverse li e using w equal to sigma inverse yields the minimum variance. Thus beta hat sigma inverse so if we use w equal to sigma inverse and then calculate the weighted least squares is always unbiased and it produces the most efficient estimator. And we can have a measure of the relative efficiency for any other weights 
by taking the kth component. So the measure for the kth element, obviously this would uh, create a variance covariance matrix. So the efficiency for the kth element would be variance of beta hat k sigma inverse by variance of beta hat kw and the relative efficiency of OLS comes out empirically to be good but one should use the correct variance which is x transpose x inverse x transpose sigma x x transpose x inverse rather than using the naive variance of OLS estimates which is sigma square x transpose x inverse. Now the idea of robust estimation. So we now know that variance of beta hat w has two components. One is the weight component and the variance component of y. Now let us start one by one. We really do not have any idea about v or the variance of y. So if we can get a consistent estimator of v say v hat then we can get an estimate of the variance of beta hat. So first is estimate of the parameter beta hat then we have done in the variance of the estimate and now we are doing an estimate of the variance of the estimate because we do not know what is v. So we are plugging in an consistent estimator of v which we are use uh, which we are calling as v hat and then it the result would be the same thing but this time v has been replaced by v hat and this variance estimate of beta hat will convert to the correct variance asymptotically. Now the v part is over and we can assume that we can plug in v hat. We are next left with another unknown which is w which is the weight matrix. Now w inverse is called the working covariance matrix and fortunately the choice of w do not affect the validity of the inference. It might affect the efficiency though but it does not affect the validity and hence the choice of w is robust to the misspecifications. In this context there is one estimator which is called the sandwich estimator and the sandwich estimator is nothing but the estimator where v has been replaced by the sample variance covariance matrix which is yi minus mu i yi minus mu i transpose where obviously mu i corresponds to the fitted value from a saturated model and the variance is called the sandwich or empirical estimator and the beta hat so obtained using the sandwich estimator is consistent. Now the how do we do it in R? We have a extra session in R where we would be talking about robust estimation. But generally in R the GEE function of the R package GEE does the robust estimation and computes the naive standard errors based on the correlation matrix. One thing that needs to be remembered is that this all the weighted least squares and the robust estimation that GEE performs and what we have discussed is free from any sort of likelihood. So nowhere in estimating the parameters we have used the function or the likelihood function. We have started by minimizing the sum of squares and instead of minimizing the sum of squares we have minimized the weighted sum of squares and in the process we have estimated about uh, the or we have taken some assumption about w, w and V which are the weights and the variance covariance matrix of Y but nowhere have we assumed a distributional assumption. In the next session we shall 
go and assume a distributional assumption and see how we can use this concept of general linear model. In this session, we have learned about the weighted least squares in context to the general linear model. The weighted least squares uses or uh, the weighted least squares minimizes the residual sum of squares, but this time it minimizes a weighted residual sum of squares to get the parameter estimates. In the next session, we would go into the likelihood form of the general linear model and then we would describe what is called the restricted maximum likelihood estimates and how we can use the likelihood function to obtain the parameters or the unknown parameters beta.